hi guys welcome back to my channel i'm juliana and today yes we are a day late but what it matters is that this video will be posted so today i'm going to talk to you about christmas a history by judith flanders this book um, came out also as christmas a biography this is from 2017 whatever the name what counts is the content so i'm going to start by the end i love reading this so i have to be honest along the reading i can't say that in every single point i was excited or glued to the story there were points in here that I was a bit more dis distracted because uh, the things that Judith uh, was saying, well, I didn't really care so much per se because although this book will tell uh, historian facts about many European cultures, like in German, Netherlands, uh, Sweden, and also of the United States. This will be a bit more focus, focused on the United Kingdom, specific, specifically England. But you know, that's not a deter for you to read this at all. I think this is a kind of a prequel for other readings you may do. At least it was, it is, or it is being for me because right now I want to read other sources and other authors about the same subject. But okay, what do we have here? So Judy Flanders begins the first chapter of this book saying that a lot of legends as some traditions came to be are misleading and are not so faithful to the true history of those traditions or of those customs. One of them, I suppose, at least I'm speaking for myself because I thought this was true, that Coca-Cola invented the red suit for Santa Claus and apparently it wasn't really like that <laughs> so she begins to tear down your fantasies should we say and about Christmas and how things came to be uh, and then she goes on to begin telling the story we can say at the beginning so in the religious part of things talking about the nativity uh, that this was or this is primordially a commemoration a festivity for the birth of jesus christ but of course christmas is much more than that and she picks a point where she says that nowadays many people say oh in the old days there we would uh, celebrate Christmas as it should have been or as we should right now but she says it's not quite like that because even in the 1800s and so on and so forth Christmas was already a, f a full burn commercial, com commercial uh, festivity and she picks she has a note in um, oh yes here it is for those who say that today's christmas begins earlier every year the another knee necklace advertisement of 1728 was printed in late november while as early as the 1820s advertisements for annuals were not unknown in October. 
By the end of the century, the advertisement, so DA Reklam, a German trade magazine, warned that after early December, shoppers were to worn out to act on new advertisements. In 1929, a consortium of retailers in Los Angeles promoted the 1929 Wonder of Christmas in October. In fact, as early as 1661, when Almanac took it, from, took it for granted that preparations began in November, when the cook and the confit, confit maker make ready for Christmas. So, this he, she explains here, um, she references here some things that she has spoken about previously in her book, but I think you can gather what I'm trying to say. So, even in those times, the, the commercial part and the um, materialistic part of Christmas was already celebrated. So, as you to say that, oh, in those days we, we celebrated uh, well. Perhaps that's not true. As I was saying, she gives a retrospective, a historical retrospective uh, by the wise the celebration of the birth of Jesus Christ was put surrounding the winter solstice. And of course, I, I think this is known already for some of you or the majority of you, that pagan festivities were celebrated during this period. And so the church was trying to eradicate those pagan festivities and in an attempt to do so as no one really knew when Christ was born they selected this date to coincide with the festivities of pagans so that in a way to erase and the, the pagan festivities and this period to be known as the born of Jesus Christ and a festivity of the Catholic Church. And you know, we can say they were very well successful <laughs> and they achieved what they wanted. So that's why also uh, Christmas at the beginning was more a celebration to go to parties, to celebrate with dances, with drinking, heavy drinking, and you know, being drunk basically. A really big party. And in, as the years go, went by, it became a more family-driven festivity. So, as everything, times develop and things evolve and that's what happened. And the same thing with, at the first, it was more celebrated in the nobles' houses. So, they would gather lords and nobles and they would do feasts in their houses and it was kind of there that the um, gastronomy, the, the Natalin or the Christmassy gastronomy went to be developed so it was in the houses of the nobles because it was like in 1500s, 1600s, 1700s it was more and more known that certain type of desserts, certain, certain type of plates were being cooked to uh, and being served specifically during the Christmas time. So, you know, everything took time, but 
things like in a carousel began to happen. So Judith will create an almost chronology of the adoption of customs that were originated in different parts of Europe, mostly um, in Germany, in Netherlands, in Sweden, as I said before. So, for instance, the Christmas trees in Germany and the Netherlands, in the first times they did that, they put trees in public, in public squares but they weren't decorated at the beginning. Then, further on, they were being decorated with edibles and paper roses or something like that. And more later, they, were, they began to bring the trees inside the homes. So everything was a progress, step by step, you know, then also came electricity and the inventions of Christmas lights, some that, well, the, the poor people of course didn't have accommodations large enough to have a tree or even have electricity. And then they invented the batteries, so people didn't need electricity to have Christmas lights, so every, every, every single invention and that came with other historical facts that were happening at the time. She will say uh, by the end of her book, let me read to you. The most profound changes in the celebration of Christmas accompanied the four great revolutions of the more modern period in the West. The civil war that toppled Charles I and brought Cromwell to power, the American Revolution, the French Revolution and the Industrial Revolution. So all of these things influenced the development of the traditions of Christmas. So everything from, like I said, the trees, the nativity scenes, the Christmas fairs, Christmas carols, even wrapping paper, for you to have an idea. She talks about wrapping paper in here and how that came to be, because at the beginning the presents weren't wrapped, right? And then for some reason that I'm not going to tell you, you have to read it, they began to be wrapped. But of course, you know, at the beginning, the costs of doing things were very high, so not um, right up front things weren't adopted. But as long as the time went by and technology developed and costs of production reduced, things would become more affordable and so open to more people. And so that's why nowadays it's so common so many things during this time of year. So as I was saying, even the... Oh, she really will go to detail about the origins and the physiognomy, the physiognomy of Santa Claus. So I was one of those people who thought that who invented Santa Claus was Coca-Cola. I really thought it. So, if you didn't, congratulations, that wasn't me. I really thought it was Coca-Cola. All my life I thought it. Uh, and in here she will talk about an illustration, a, li, uh, a illustrator called Nest, that it wasn't only him, other, other illustrators have their own ideas and their own ways to represent Santa Claus. But Nest was the one who created, well, at the time it were, the pictures were black and white, but as the time went along, he, went, he could 
put color in his pictures and so he represented it in a red uh, old man or an elderly man with a big beard a big belly uh, with boots with a belt so on and so forth as you know santa claus today and it was yes coca-cola that with an advertisement that ran from 30 1930 something to 19 the 1960s i i think and then it was repeated during the 80s and the 90s so it popularized in like globally that image of santa claus so that's why we associate or at least i was one of them that i associated santa claus with coca-cola but well she even goes to talk about the origins of santa claus that it became with saint nicholas and she will tell you the different variations of stories about the saint descent so i'm so sorry the wind is very windy today here and my door is weak <laughs> so you will have here a panoply of information about this festivity how it came to be that the traditions that perhaps you think are original to your country began in another one and you and your culture adopted it as anything so this is fascinating i was very intrigued very interested of course when she was talking about um like the the 1500s that was that period when i was a bit more bored i never got really bored but i was a bit um far away from what she was saying you know so that to me didn't say anything to me so i it was a bit distant from my reality so i was a bit distracted there but it was a small bit so nothing major and as you can see this book is not that very long so um you won't be she doesn't dwell on things so she will explain with a certain detail but she will get along so it, this is great and now i i wanted to share with you the proposals that she does she called she called it further reading like mark connelly with christmas a history from 2012 Paul Frodsham from Stone Age to Santa Claus, The Evolution of Christmas from 2008. She has here many others, but these two are the first ones and the more recent ones, I think. So I was very curious to read these two. But yeah, she, she has here a fabulous work that I very much enjoyed. Uh, I love this time of year, I love this festivity, um, although I consider myself an agnostic, I celebrate Christmas, I celebrate it all my life and I do give much importance to this time of year because it's uh, a time where we are, I think all of us, or who celebrates Christmas, uh, gathers with family and you know i have i still have grandparents and they are still um autonomous well they are they are still autonomous although my grandmother is a bit debilitated right now and so this time of year is one that she is dear to her heart and she loves to have us in her house every year we go to my grandparents house to commemorate christmas in the 25th so 
you know, it's dear to me as well. And I want to continue to celebrate Christmas because I think it represents family. For me, Christmas is family. So I don't think you have to be a religious person to commemorate that, you know. Yeah, I hope you will pick this one up. I highly advise you. And even if you want to, if not this one, pick the other two that I mentioned, at least. I can, I can put in the description box the other mentions that she does from the further reading uh, that she advises, if you want. I will put that down below for you to see and to choose, go to Goodreads, see the synopsis and then choose the ones that you are more, more interested in. So there you go. I hope you have enjoyed it. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't subscribed already. Don't forget to press the ring bell button to all so you can receive all my notifications. Leave a like, it helps out the divulgation of the video and the divulgation of the channel. Follow me on no. <laughs> Follow me on all socials. I will have them link all of them in the box description. So go check there that out. And at the end of the video I also have my names on all of them so my ads right <laughs> so go check that out and please follow me on all of them so we can be connected and i see you on the next one bye oh right perhaps now i won't see you will i see you Right now, I won't see you till Christmas, after Christmas. So, I want to wish you a very Merry Christmas together with your family, if possible. If you are working, have strength, push it through. It's for a good cause. You are earning money, it's also needed. So, I hope you will have an opportunity to be with your family in a different time, perhaps in January, in the new year, who knows, or after that. So whatever you will do, I hope you are healthy, you are secure, you are safe, and you are joyful. So Merry Christmas to you all, and I will see you a day after the 25th, I will see you in the 26th Tuesday, so yeah, see you there, bye!